Hey Q30, it's Isabella. Today I got the privilege of interviewing John Franklin, who starred in the hit Netflix series, The Circle. He graduated from Quinnipiac just a few years ago and was a very own Q30 alum. Let's hear what he has to say about his time at Quinnipiac and how he got on the show. So I just want to start with like talking about your Quinnipiac, your time at Quinnipiac. Uh, so you graduated in 2020, I believe. It looked like you may have done the four plus one though. But... Yeah, I did. So okay. undergrad was 2019. Okay, awesome. So can you just tell us a bit about your time at Quinnipiac and what kind of clubs and programs you were involved in? Oh, for sure. Yeah. So uh, I, first of all, loved my time at Quinnipiac. Uh, to this day, we'll say like it was some of the best four years of my life. Luckily, like uh, it's provided me with so many opportunities since. Um, but yeah, um, I was involved in a lot of different stuff. I started doing Q30 my freshman year uh, and that was with, you know, a load, load of my friends. And I'm still friends with a lot of those people to this day. Uh, I've been, I was in a fraternity from the time of my fall semester freshman year, I was in Pi Kappa Phi there at Quinnipiac. I worked for our athletic department. So that was around junior year. I started doing that, um, worked with all of our sports teams. So, you know, our great hockey teams, our women's basketball team, I got to work with very closely and they were super successful. And that was a lot of fun. Worked hand in hand with our volleyball team, which was awesome. They're still some of my best friends to this day. I worked on our volleyball team, played on our volleyball team and I worked with them. Uh, yeah, I got to do a bunch of different things like that. I was in the the notables my freshman year. I did a bunch of different crazy stuff, um, but it was definitely all worth it for the experience and I loved every minute of it. What would you say was the biggest factor in your time at Quinnipiac that kind of pushed you to where you are now? Wow, uh, what a good question. What a question. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, no, that was a, that's a great question. I think like, I, I would say a lot of my friends were very motivated people. Like if you look across the entirety of the people that I call my best friends at Quinnipiac, uh, you know, we had nurses, we had the people who are very successful in the news world now, like there's just so much success across the board with my friends, like the things that they got involved in, the things that they do, that it became such a motivating factor for me. Because like, when you have friends like that, it's just like, you all sort of work together in a certain sense, even though you're succeeding separately, which it was always really cool. That was like a very defining thing for me. Um, and another big thing for me was like being a part of the fraternity that I was in and being in PiCap was, uh, was something that I really enjoyed because it never felt like we were doing like really fratty stuff. It felt like everybody was very different and did a bunch of different types of things. Like we had a bunch of guys in the three plus one program. We had a bunch of nursing majors. Like we had guys like me who were doing like social media and journalism. And it was like getting to do such of a, like making a, a really large variety of things out of my experience was so valuable to me. And like, Another and just to like kind of hit home with it too, the professors were so great. Like I could still I could still talk about some of the best professors I had at Quinnipiac, whether it was like my freshman year English teacher, Drew Stutzman, I'm still in touch with. Like he's one of my favorite teachers I've ever had um in my entire life. Uh you talk about the journalism professors. I know you got like Hanley, Diaz, like the list goes on and on and on about those guys, but like Hanley and Diaz in particular were were so great. Uh in my Quinnipiac experience they were so on top of what I did because they loved seeing us succeed and like I think that's a, another really cool thing about the Quinnipiac community too is that the, the professors really want to see you do well did you always want to do social media for a living no no I didn't I did not always want to do social media for a living <laughs> I started out and I like you know doing the Q30 stuff and like I wanted to be like sort of like the next tv sports reporter like Al Michaels like Bob Costas do things like that and um, I think what kind of hit for me was like, I love the big metropolitan areas. Like I loved growing up in the shadow of New York City and like wanting to make something of myself there. I love like the idea of maybe even going to Boston, which isn't like a big city. Chicago is one of my favorite cities ever. So I was like, I can't see myself uh, giving up like that idea just to go do news. And like, I commend anybody who does it because that is so hard to like uproot your life and like go to like an area of the world where, or an area of America that you've probably never been to and make something of it just to move back into like these bigger market areas. It was just not something for me. Um, but I do know that like, it takes a lot of guts to do that. So I have a lot of respect for those people. Um, I just knew that social media was a good pairing of my ability to be on camera as well as my creativity to keep me in the areas that I wanted to be. So when I got to my first job, which was running social media for Wentworth Institute of Technology, which I did get through a Quinnipiac connection, which is awesome. That's awesome. Um, that was like my first taste of like, I can make on camera into a social media thing. We had done it a bit at athletics, you know, like doing a little like social media shows here and there. Like oh, yeah, yeah. we had experimented with putting things in like what is now 
TikTok and Reels sizes because back then we were like, I say back then, like it was forever ago, but back then <laughs> it was like, you know, this was just like in its infancy. So we were like, we got to try to see if we could do it. And uh, ne- like by doing that, it, it really gave me that, that hunger, like that desire that I wanted for being on camera. Like that feeling was like, I wasn't missing it by doing social media and I still had the creative element. So that's why I ended up in social media, but I did initially want to be on television. That's, that's why I always say like, I'd give those people a lot of credit because yeah. I couldn't do it. And I will say I couldn't do it. It was just not my thing. But for the people who do do it, some of them are some of my closest friends. I give them so much credit. So you're currently working for Bet MGM, correct? Yes. All right. So could you tell us a little bit about what you do there and what's your favorite part about it? Oh, cool. Yeah. So what I do now is I'm a social media content creator. So basically what that entails is just like I am part of the team of there's six of us six of us and we all have like a different hand in running our social media so like day to day we all have a hand in running the twitter instagram tiktok and like instagram reels like doing all that good stuff um but basically my um kind of niche of that department is i do a lot of like the video and on air stuff so that's what that's what my favorite part ends up being is that like i've gotten to travel all over the country i've gotten to work with athletes that I never could have imagined with if I was a kid like Barry Sanders you know Chris Johnson these people who I looked up to as like a child and I get to call them like a colleague to a certain extent I went to the Super Bowl this year got to see it live yeah like I mean that was just that that was supposed to be work and it just isn't you were obviously giving a massive opportunity to be on the Netflix hit show The Circle I'm a huge fan. And as soon as I realized that you were from Quinnipiac, I think it was with the picture of your mom and it had a diploma in the picture. I'm and sure, I like, yeah. I don't know if that makes me sound like I was paying too much attention, but I was like, wait. And I rewind it. I was like, oh my God, look, he's from Quinnipiac. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. that was really awesome to hear. So we have to know how you got on the show. What was kind of the process of that? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Totally. Uh, so when I, I was just interviewing or like right before I got my first interview with that MGM I was kind of like in the, like I said kind of a limbo phase of my last job because the pandemic was kind of taking a toll on me and having that job because it was located in Boston I had since moved home uh to Caldwell in New Jersey because like I just couldn't maintain having an apartment that I wasn't gonna live in and uh I was like well I gotta make a decision and I went out of a job for a month and I was looking for a job and I was like you know what My sister, Tori, also a Quinnipiac graduate, um, she kind of was like, you know, you could do the circle. Like, that's something like you could definitely be good at. And we had watched it. It wasn't like I wasn't a fan. I loved the show. So I just applied. And then in May of 2021, I had gotten my job at that point. And in May of 2021, I got an email for like an audition. Sure. So I auditioned and it went, I mean, I, I mean, I want to say great looking back on it because I made it on the show but now that I'm thinking about it I'm stalling because I do remember that they were like all right John like you know you're here it's a casting call so like there's a lot of other people that that have this opportunity what separates you like what's your game and I was like oh yeah like and you do like the whole shtick like hi guys I'm John like I'm from New Jersey like you're doing the whole like play it up thing and I was like and I would play myself and the casting director put her hand out and was like stop no you won't and I was like, I sure would like to. And she goes, no, uh, you have to play somebody else. Like we need catfishes on this season. So come up with something. And I panicked and I went, I'll play my mom. Oh my God. And that's how the, um, like the infancy of the idea of playing my mother and on the show came out. Do you, uh, well, my question was going to be, did you, why, what made you decide to play as your mom? But did you find it harder to play as her than being yourself? Or do you wish you had? been able to play as yourself I sometimes I wish I played myself but the the best part about like playing my mom was like one I basically just played myself with the facade of the picture (laughs) yeah you just had to like change around the language like a little bit and and it was fine because my mom and I are super close like that wasn't hard for me to channel that um side of me but the cool part was like and since the show and this has been like what made it worth it to play my mom is like a lot of the experience post-show has been like my mom and I get to do some stuff together and like oh, that's awesome. she, her getting to experience kind of like her five minutes of fame, you know? And like, that's cool. Cause like my mom gave up a lot to have a family like it, like just like, as far as it was like, she wanted to play piano and like instead chose a career and it was like 
to give her this like in her 60s and like getting her to experience like that's why when I go home like I try to do an Instagram with her every now and again like even if it's just a story like she she really likes it and like I love seeing her do it so like even a lot of people are like does it ever get annoying or something like because like you have to like your mom people are always asking for your mom's like no like how can that be annoying it's my mom, your mom. Like, <laughs> it's never annoying because like yeah. she was such a great sport about it she was like yeah go do it like had no she regard was happy for that it you were, that you were and, her. <laughs> exactly like she was just like go do it and like and that's why like there's no there's no getting annoyed about anything about it because like she gave me the chance like as much as the show gave me the chance to go on it she gave me the chance to do what it was that got me on the show. So like, I I love getting to share it with her. Did you find that it was lonely? I know a lot of past contestants said it was kind of weird. Like you couldn't have your phone. You couldn't watch TV or anything, right? And yeah, no, no TV, no nothing. Talk to yourself. Yeah, and like, for me, it was weird because they only call you by the name that you're playing. So I was Carol for a month. Like everybody called me Carol. Producers, everybody. I was never John because of the off chance of them slipping up to another contestant. Really? Yeah. So that was tough for me mentally, because like after a while, you're like, I just want to be John again. Yeah. But at the same time, like living in the apartment, I had the best producers in the world. Um, the people who were like what they call your voice of God, like your Vogue, because you could only hear them over a speaker. Oh, OK. And they would like we would talk every day for like, you know, collectively, probably like two hours. But that's a lot when you're filming for like basically 24 hours a day. And like we were just like it kept me sane because you don't see people and like just getting to have those conversations was really cool and the other thing that was awesome oh my god this is so cool i get to talk about this at a, a q30 thing yeah. um jazzy collins is a floor producer of the show uh -huh. and the floor producers are responsible for like just they take you into your room when you first get there mm -hmm. and like when you have to get fresh air so like when you get to go stand out on a balcony for like 10 minutes and I would always like when I would get fresh air, like some contestants want to be alone. Some contestants want to talk to the floor producers and some of them just want to talk about the game. I didn't want to talk about the game at all. Like when I would get Great. fresh air, I would talk about anything, anything else. Like it didn't matter. And the first day I got fresh air, Jazzy brought me out and she was the same person who brought me into the show. And like, we were just talking and I was like, oh, so did you always know you want to do TV or whatever? And she's like, yeah, I went to school uh, for film. I was like, oh, that's cool. Where'd you go to school for film? She said, like, that was a small school. You might never heard of it called Quinnipiac University. Oh my gosh. And I was like, you're kidding. I was like, I went to Quinnipiac University. And she was like, no way. So she graduated. Her senior year was my senior year of high school. Wow. So, so we were literally like one year apart from having gone to Quinnipiac together. Oh my gosh. And we've since kept in touch. Like, it's a crazy connection. But like, who would think that like a Quinnipiac graduate five years ahead in the TV industry the way that we meet was me going on a TV show that she was floor producing for in England, she not even in America. was doing it for you. Like, that's so crazy. That's and awesome. we became like best friends, like just during oh. the filming of the show. So obviously, like I said before, you got pretty far in the competition, which was really exciting to watch. I wish you'd made it all the way to the end. I'm sure you're Thank great. You. <laughs> um, but can you tell us your favorite part about the experience? If you had to just pick one, one part about it or part about afterwards? Yeah. Um, I, I would say the, the coolest experience for me, like physical experience of being on the show uh, was getting to live a moment that I never thought I would. Like getting to be on a television show and like you come home and you're like, you just want to watch something on Netflix and you're like, you're scrolling through and you see your face on Netflix is like a life changing experience for anybody. Um, and the other thing is, all, and this is like something I will say, I've said in every interview when people ask me this question, and I will say it for every interview after this, is the people that you meet doing this show is insane. Like the fact that we're all friends and close the way that we are now is crazy to me. Like I always say, like if you line us up in like a police lineup, like in order, and you say what connects these people to like a random person, they would have no idea. Yeah. And like, that's really cool. Cause like, we're all so close. Like Brew and I talk all the time. And before I even got on the show, I knew who he was just from like TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like the fact that him and I are like really best friends. Like I crashed at his apartment when I went out to the oh, rap yeah. party. It's like, oh, really? it's like, those are experiences that you just, you don't take for granted. 
and like that was the best part happen (laughs) yeah like how do you like i didn't win the money i didn't get like you don't get like the million billion followers or anything you get like a couple thousand what i got was like the coolest life experience ever do you uh do you feel like since you know you do social media for your career do were you as prepared as you thought for the show oh doing social media has nothing to do with the show (laughs) like they 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 show it as a social media show or whatever but like it is not that all you have to do is be really a conversationalist like be able to talk about anything because a lot of those conversations last way longer than they do on television like hours and you just have to make sure like you could keep up like if you're in a group chat and you're not answering for like an hour and a half people are like yeah so like you just gotta be on top of it so it's really just like the art of the conversation more so than it is like the art of social media You've talked a lot about other stuff that audiences wouldn't have known without without you telling them. But what was one thing, if you could tell us, about filming The Circle that audiences definitely don't know? I don't know if I've talked about this. This might be like insider stuff, but it's not okay. that it's not that big. Okay. But it's pretty cool. Um, when you go on the show, you are given like a notebook and things like that. And um, at the end, they take that notebook from you so you can't give it to anybody else or or leak your notes from the game to like media sources but I didn't take any notes during the game so my notebook remains in my position I'm the only player to have kept the notebook completely intact because I'm the only player that has like just never taken notes or written anything in it because I just never take notes like that's just not my thing so like I'm the only player I think according to the producers I I (laughs) could be like making something up there might be another player in the other seasons but according to them across all four seasons i'm the only player in the history of the show to have oh. to have never written in the notebook and ma- like make it as far as i did obviously but to have never written in the notebook and gotten to keep the whole notebook at the end of my experience wow that's pretty cool actually yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like a little souvenir but nobody else gets to have it except you so yeah exactly so like I, a cool part was like in like a few weeks ago, like I had uh, met like there's a, a little girl and her mom who are fans of the show, and like the mom ran into me and was like, "Oh, can can you like meet my daughter? Like maybe we can meet for a coffee." And like we, I was like, "Yeah, absolutely." So like I met her daughter. So like there are like little tabs in the notebook that like you're supposed to use to, like mark your notes. I never used them, so I just gave the little girl the tabs because I was oh, like, "That's sweet." I was like, you know, I'm not gonna use these. These come from the circle notebook. Like I took a picture of it in my room, like so she could see. Like it was oh, really like. Cute. I was like, you could have it, like they're yours. And like, she was so stoked about it. It's, it's really cool. How would you say, you know, now that the circle's over, how has it influenced your professional aspirations? Obviously you said it's a lot less social media than it was, but how has it just affected your life up until now? Yeah, I mean, take the job out of the equation because like, I do love my job. I didn't think I'd be able to book a stand-up tour uh, in my life. Like, I didn't think that was going to be a thing because I've been doing stand-up for about three years now in New York City yeah. and it's been a whirlwind um but now like like i'm coming up to quinnipiac to do a show like i'm getting paid to do stand-up around the country and like that is a crazy impact in my life and so obviously you mentioned your stand-up and your music i just kind of want to know what's next for you tell us a little bit about your tour and yeah like quinnipiac <laughs> yeah so i'm filming a special this year at quinnipiac university which is incredible um september 1st i'll be there we're doing an, well i'm doing 45 minutes it's an hour uh, collective event where I'm going to do like a meet and greet Q and a thing, which is amazing. I never thought I'd do that. I'm doing a tour. We're hitting eight cities. Uh, I'm not going to divulge those cities just yet because we have to finalize the clubs, but I can tell you that New York, New Jersey is a state where we don't know exactly which town yet. Uh, New Jersey, Baltimore, um, and Chicago are all on that list. So I'm, ho- and I'm hoping to get more details on that. Uh, Toronto as well. So I'm going to get more details on that. So I could give you more details on that. Yeah. Uh, find me on social media uh instagram tiktok i'm always ramping up so uh i would love for you guys to come follow me check me out and my youtube channel is slowly becoming a thing (laughs) Um, and uh yeah that that's really it that's really what i got going on for the rest of the year and um i'm doing a whole new series around hoboken and new jersey called franklin finds where i'm trying to highlight local businesses so if you got one feel free to reach out i'm trying to link up with as many as i can and do as many as i can in the year but 
you know, every now and again, you kind of need a break, but those are my big things I got going on right now. Well, good for you. Congratulations on all your success, you know, besides the show, but also just post show and everything you're doing right now. I'm really excited to see you when you come to Quinnipiac. Oh, thanks, Isabella. You are awesome. I really appreciate you having <laughs> me on. This you. is really cool.